Hi everyone, we're going to take a look at the Jomeek preamp down in Studio D. This is the preamp that you're going to use to record your, your uh, podcast, your producer podcast. And I wanted to go through some of the controls for you. Uh, we have our microphone plugged into the uh, front panel XLR input. And I wanted to point out up here in Pro Tools, this is going to be really hard to see, but in a very awkward angle that I have going on here. But in Pro Tools, I do actually have the Joe Meek Pre selected uh, in the uh, the input column of that particular track. You should be able to get level right away. Um, so I'm recording my audio as we go so I can use it for this podcast. So on the preamp itself, down in the, uh, the preamp section, I'll try to focus in and be able to talk at the same time here. Um, what we're dealing with is the ability to, of course, affect, you know, just phantom power, the pad. We've got the li mic line switch. We have this iron button, which is just changes the um, uh, characteristic, tonal characteristic of the preamp. And then you have your actual preamp adjustment. The metering that we see going on right now is showing us the output of this entire module. If we wanted to see the input, we would hit this pre button here. When we hit that, then we can adjust the preamp level up and get a little better level input. So you should have heard that um, input come up as we, as we go there. So we can turn it off the pre button and now our metering is back to just showing us output. Now this preamp also has a built-in compressor. It has an EQ, they call the equalizer. It has a de -esser. And then this uh, device called an enhancer. So I would certainly want to do some compression on our, on our vocal. And in this optical compressor, we first have to hit the on button. And we'll hear the output comes up just a little bit. And what we're going to adjust here is the compression and the slope. The compression is your threshold setting. The slope is your ratio. So on a vocal, a podcast vocal, I would select um, around a three to one to four to one ratio. Now the compressor, the or the compress knob, which is our threshold knob, acts a little backwards than normal compressors. A lot of compressors you would turn down to turn the threshold down. This one you turn up to turn the threshold down. So in other words, you get more compression by turning the knob up. So what we can do also is go back to the meter and choose the GR button, which stands for gain reduction. And you'll notice that the meter now is shooting up to zero. When I actually talk in a little bit and get some compression, you'll see that meter. So I'm going to turn the compression up, turn it up, and you'll see that meter start to check, 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 check. We'll actually start to show you some gain reduction. So right now I'm getting about 3 dB of normal compression. And then when I really get loud, it gets about 7 dB or so. And hopefully you heard in my voice a little bit of compression happening. Now the attack and release setting on a compressor is really important. Um, for our vocal, for our podcast, we don't want a really fast attack because we don't want to affect this transience of our voice too much. So we're going to do like about a, a, a middle of the road sort of attack setting, which is pretty much straight up and down. That's about the 10 millisecond mark. Now the release, same idea for our vocal. We don't want it to be too fast or we'll get this phenomenon called pumping, which is kind of an interesting um, thing where you, you hear the compressor kick in and then it kicks off right away and it makes our voice sound a little bit awkward. So we're gonna slow that down a little bit. So about a, a happy medium here, and we're just watching the meter kind of more or less follow my um, vocal pattern. You can see that it's, it's doing a pretty good job for us um, kind of um, keeping the vocal at bay. And it sounds really nice as well. Now, another thing to note is I'm not right up on the microphone. I'm probably about four inches away from the mic to get a really natural vocal tone without too much um, proximity effect. If you do find that you have too much low end or it's it's uh, popping a lot when you, when you say P's or B's, there is a HPF high pass filter here that you can apply. Um, when I pressed it, you didn't hear much of a difference because it wasn't, uh, uh, wasn't too bad in the low end on my voice in particular. You have gain makeup then, which is your output knob, so you'll hear it get louder or softer as we, as we go and adjust that. All right, so then we can move over to our EQ. The equalizer is just a standard EQ. You have a low frequency uh, shelf and then you have a mid, low mid frequency where you can adjust the frequency and the gain. Then you have a high frequency where you can adjust, or this is a high mid, which you can adjust the, the gain and frequency, and then you have a high shelf again as well. Uh, you have to turn it on, 
And then right away when I adjust this high frequency shelf, you should hear a lot of that high end come out and sound, sound really nice. Uh, you could do the search and destroy method where you boost up some of the mids and we're sweeping around the frequency on my voice. So maybe that's a little mid rangey right there. So we'll drop that down below zero and then we get a nice vocal tone. Now, the uh, thing to understand here about this equalizer is right now this equalizer is feeding into this compressor. If we want, we could have the EQ come after the compressor by coming over here to this optical compressor and pressing this post EQ. Now this compressor is actually after the EQ. So, um, so now this EQ is feeding into the compressor. If I do it the other way, which I think I just said opposite, um, without that button on, the, um, the EQ is feeding, let's see, the optical compressor is feeding into the EQ right now. Again, if I press that button, then it's after. So there's a, a little bit of a difference in how um, the compression is going to handle audio, whether it's before or after the EQ. And you can use that, that button to, to display that. All right, uh, the de-esser is a really useful tool when we are um, uh, adjusting our vocals and trying to get a less sibilant sort of sound. So what we do is we press the S but or the the de-esser on, and then the tune button tunes into those S's. And if I hit the listen button, you're going to hear my voice get sound very very tinny tinny sounding. Because ultimately, what I'm listening for is those S's to get really loud. And right about 8,000 hertz right there is is what. Uh, frequency it's uh, the worst at. And then if I turn DS or on, you'll start to hear S's, 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 S's. You can hear them changing as we go. So I'm going to not have too much DSing going on. It, it can kind of be a little bit over dramatic. So about two is fine. You'll see the little DS or light turn on. And finally, the enhancer. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of the enhancer on voice, um, but you can turn it on. And ultimately, what it does is it add har adds harmonics to a sound. Um, it, to me, it makes it sound like the vocal's a little distorted in, in a way. Um, but you can kind of tune it in with the range, and then you can hear that distortion kind of kick in. It's a, it, they call it an enhancer, but I'm not, I'm not sure that it's much other than a distorter. Um, but it ultimately is adding harmonics. So I would suggest that you not use the enhancer for this particular project. So there's your um, kind of overview of the Jomeek, and you're going to want to use that for your uh, great podcast vocal, um, and uh, that'll really uh, smooth out that sound and make it, make it sound like a professional podcast.